the problem that we are going to attempt today is the combination of three different chapters number one as you can see uh, there are two steps involved and you have to make the projection of the solid front and top for step one front and top again for step number two secondly we will also be introducing a cutting plane or a section plane which is going to look something like this as you can see the portion of the solid cut is at front whereas the portion of the solid that will retain or which we will retain is the portion behind the cutting plane let me just show this to you what you have been instructed to draw is the sectional front view which is going to be looking something of this sort okay a, a simple three-sided closed picker once you are done with this you also need to make the development of the surface of this retained solid so here is the combination projection of solids followed by section of solids and followed by development of surface of hollow solid so good evening friends this is manas patnayak your friend and tutor and uh, to begin we'll read the description very carefully and we'll note down all the data one by one here we go <clears throat> and let me switch this live section off for a while so we have been given a solid in the form of a right regular triangular pyramid side of the base is 30 millimeter the base is basically equilateral all the sides are 30 millimeters each so the angle in between is going to be 60 degrees please note that and axis 60 mm long wonderful so this axis is 60 millimeters that is lying on hp on one of the triangular slant faces triangular slant faces sir what does that exactly mean these are the triangular slant faces this or this these are the triangular slant faces and we have been asked that one of the triangular slant faces is lying on hp in step number two you can clearly see that there is one triangular face this triangular face which is in contact with the hp okay and to be very specific it is this triangular face which is in contact with the hp now uh, one thing that you guys must note in second num in step number two we are going to be pushing the solid so that it is sleeping on the horizontal plane right? you can think of it like that however in step number one we are going to keep it in the standing position with respect to its base right so this is going to be your basic assumption okay then we have to talk about or introduce a vertical cutting plane which is parallel to vp and it cuts the pyramid and it is at a distance of 10 mm from the axis cutting plane is parallel to vp can you see this cutting plane is it parallel to vp yes sir it is you can clearly see it is parallel to vp see this parallel to vp from the side both the vertical plane and the cutting plane vertical plane and the cutting plane look like a line okay so this is how you need to cut uh, apart from that it cuts at a distance of 10 mm from the axis so if you have a look at the top view the axis is right below this slant edge and from here at a distance of 10 mm what you need to do is you need to make this line or the cutting line section line whatever you may call it right and once that is done you have to draw the sectional front view you have to uh, draw the top view and develop its lateral surface so all of these things will follow eventually let me just show this to you so you know what the data are equilateral base 30 millimeter side all of them okay resting initially on hp step number two we've been clearly asked that one triangular slant face is in contact with hp so in step number two if it is in contact with hp we are keeping it in the sleeping position so for step number one we are going to keep it in the standing position right basic logic okay and basically this triangular face is what we are concerned about we are going to keep this triangular face in contact with the horizontal plane as you can see this okay so uh, how will your front view or top view look like and from which step we should i mean from which view shall we start you have to begin by asking a question since in step number one we are assuming the solid to be in the standing position but with its base on the hp 
you have to ask a question to yourself from where can you see the true shape of the base so this true shape of the base can only be seen from the top and it would look something like this so you have to begin by making an xy line and then you have to make a triangle all these angles are 60 degrees and these sides are equal to 30 millimeters once that is done you can begin by making the front view also okay and in step number two as you can see you have to keep it in the sleeping position with one slant triangular face in contact with the horizontal plane i think we should begin this is a rather easy problem i think uh, if you know the concepts very well from all the three chapters so you can start with projection of solids uh, go through section of solids and end with development of surfaces and let me just show this to you the section would be looking something of this sort okay this is going to be your section and the portion of the solid behind the section is what we have to make the development of can we begin okay here we go let me open powerpoint here we go <clears throat> so you begin by simply creating a triangle or an equilateral triangle okay you have to locate this center o how from three do this i mean these two sides are equal in length again from two repeat the same equal length okay bisectors basically now look at it from over here draw the projector lines what is the length of the axis it is given as 60 millimeters so from here draw a line 60 millimeters okay and these are the slant edges done now why have i used a red color to make the slant edges you will get to know the reason very sure in step number two what we'll do is this over here is looks like a line however it is a triangular face this which looks like a line o dash one dash two dash is a triangle o one two as you can see this triangular slant face has to be kept in contact with the horizontal plane so this point and these two points what we'll do is we'll first of all create a point two dash one dash over here let me make a point two dash one dash now with o dash two dash as the radius and with this as the center cut an arc and you will get this point o dash in the same fashion point three dash can be located which is going to be somewhere here again you have to make the intersection of two arcs to locate point three dash once this is done we have to look at the object from the top and these are the projector lines uh, please note that i am not making this axis however you are in you are you have every right to make the axis no problem i have no problem with that once you do that draw the lines from the top view in step one also and if you watch one horizontal one dash vertical this is the exact location of point one in the same way the location of all the other points can be worked out so that's quite easy as you can see this the axis if i had made the axis the axis would have been it is close to two dash so axis would have been somewhere here so we could have made the axis and the top view of the axis would be somewhere here however since a major portion of the axis is follow is is falling exactly below this o dash three dash slant edge and therefore i have not made it right that is the only reason and axis you can see is parallel to vp and by the way please make a small correction this distance is actually 10 millimeters from the axis okay 10 millimeters and not 20 <laughs> because this is 30 okay from the axis if you take a distance of 20 it is going to the cutting plane would be outside the solid therefore it is not going to cut the solid right so please note please make this correction of 10 millimeters right okay so far so good now let me introduce the cutting plane the axis is somewhere here falling exactly below this edge o dash 3 dash and at a distance of 10 millimeters let me place it as you can see there are going to be three points let me name them a b and c if you watch this cutting point is a somewhere in between one and two this cutting point is b somewhere in between two and three and this cutting point is c in between two 
and O. All right. If you try to make the front view for all of these cutting points, you will realize that while taking the front view, two behind two is A and behind A is one. So uh, you are going to simply write A over here. This particular point, I mean, all the three points will converge to one single point. One A two, which looks like a line in the top view, it no longer looks like a line. Instead, it looks like a point. So we are going to mark A dash over here. Similarly, this is C dash, O two, O dash two dash, and this is B between two three. So between two dash and three dash, you can see B dash. This is how you are going to do the locate the cutting points now when you join all of these cutting points what you have is a section so far so good now let's talk about the part of developing the solid which is remaining okay how do you start the development because here every length that you choose is going to be based on true length please note again this is 10 True length. Can you determine the true length of any slant edge of this pyramid? Yes, sir. As we can see that O3 is parallel. The top view of slant edge O3 is parallel. Therefore, the front view will be true. This is going to be the true length. Also, this O3 is parallel to XY. So O dash 3 dash will be the true length. So you can choose the true length. You have the option of choosing the true length from either step number one or step number two. It is your choice. Sir, are there any other options? Yes, there are. If you watch carefully, the front view. You can say O dash 1 dash is parallel to XY. Apart from being parallel, it is overlapping XY. So it is parallel. O dash 2 dash is also parallel x y you can say that okay now if it is parallel then in such a case the corresponding top view that is you can choose o2 or you can choose o1 these two also qualify as the true length now i would strongly advise all of you to calculate this true length this true length and this true length and this true length all of them would be same no difference whatsoever okay if you choose their arcs all of those arcs will be having equal radii or if you do the measurements in autocad all of those measurements would be exactly the same right so far so good let me erase this uh, 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 uh. this card let me run the animation again okay so we've reached here we have the cutting points I was talking about true length so with this much o dash 3 dash as the radius you simply need to make an arc you know what the true length is okay just do this done okay the base 1 3 this is 30 this is 30 this is 30 now you have to choose a radius of 30 with 1 as center you need to cut an arc. That's two. With two as center, three as center, and now you simply, since all all of these base points are connected via straight edges, so connect one to two by single straight line, then two to three, then three to one, and then connect all these slant edges. Done. Okay. Now what? How are we going to shift these points from the step number two into the development? That is going to be a challenge watch this carefully now what we'll do is let's say you want point a okay where is a sir point a is along this edge one two one two it is very close to two by the way so point a will be along this edge one two very close to two so point a is going to be somewhere here that's the first thing now ask the question is one two showing the true length Yes, 1, 2 is the true length because this is still equal to 30 millimeters. However, 1, 3 is not the true length. 2, 3 is also not the true length. So, 
you can straight away take an arc take with two small a as the radius and with this two as the center you need to cut an arc towards one you'll get point a in the same fashion let's locate this point c is point c in the true limb yes point c is in the true limb the reason being very simple this you can see o dash 2 dash is parallel to x y therefore this over here o2 will represent its true limb and this point c is on the true limb straight away so what you need to do is you need to take this small oc as the radius and with o as center o2 o2 cut an arc this is going to give you point c now let me ask you about point b please let me know if point b is on the true length or not sir point b is not on the true length the reason being very simple this is also inclined 2 dash 3 dash is inclined 2 3 is inclined and point b is a part of this edge 2 3 so in both the views it is inclined so we cannot uh, i mean choose the distance straight away and locate it over here no 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 what we can do we can make it parallel so what we'll do is we'll take this 3 dash as the center and with 3 b 3 dash b dash as the radius i'm going to rotate until it becomes parallel let's call this as b1 dash okay so if the front view has shifted to a new location the top view will also shift to a new location along this line drop a line this way so this is the new location b1 connect b1 with 3 that's it now with 3 b1 as radius i have also written it over here with 3 b1 as radius and with this 3 as center towards 2 cut an arc this is going to give you point b join all of these points that is the portion this portion has to be removed whereas this portion behind the cutting plane will be retained and it should look something like this done okay so that is your development and that would be all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or queries, write them down in the comment section below. And to download the Maras Patnaya app to enroll in my courses on engineering drawing, engineering mechanics, and AutoCAD. <laughs> okay, thank you very, very much for watching. Have a nice day.